Well, good morning. Welcome back to New Life Family Center here in Sherwood, Oregon. Again, I'm Pastor Larry. Thank you for joining us again today. Before we get into our message this morning, I have some pretty exciting news, especially for those who were part of our church uh, here physically in Christmas of 2019. You might remember that uh, we started a, a Christmas project. Now, let me pause there. For those who have joined us uh, new to our church and the, through these broadcasts, let me kind of tell you what we've done the last few years. We've been able to kind of get on to some kind of Christmas project where we can help people, help an organization, help a family, uh, do those kind of things. Every Christmas we've done that. And this last year, um, we had an opportunity to connect with Child Hope. And Child Hope was found by uh, Adam, who spoke to you last week, our youth leader, and uh, Connor, my oldest son. They had gone to a convention and saw this presentation. And they came back really excited about it. And so we looked into it and we, became, we adopted that as our Christmas project for 2019. And so with that said, um, we then decided that we would do it. There was a kind of a special going on. They were able to get water filters to give clean water for $25 a piece, shipped in country. And what was happening at that time through Child Hope is through the Christian schools down there, they were trying, they were able to, uh, as people sponsored, they were hoping to get each child a water filter. They would in turn be taught, they and their families would be taught how to use it. They would take it home. Now, why this is important is Guatemala does not have any clean water. And they were able to take this home. Through that, they were able to attend school on a regular basis because they weren't sick. Mom and dad could work uh, more regularly because they weren't sick. All of these things became a positive influence into the home. And so, again, we took this up. We were hoping to do one classroom, which was just under $1,000, 800 almost $900. Um, we were hoping to get one classroom. We're a small church, $25 a piece. I thought, hmm, what can we do? So prayerfully, I was hoping for one classroom. As this took a hold in our church, people were very excited about what we were doing. I mean, and it, over the course of that month, we kept taking donations as people had them and different things. I'm going to tell you, we were able to raise funds Almost $5,000, which supplied an entire school in Guatemala. Each child in that school was able to get a water filter. So what you're about to see is about a two-minute video from Child Hope down in Guatemala. You're going to see the, the uh, water filters there and some pictures of the families. But one of the things they want you to know that in this video... Uh, what you're going to see, you know, adults with water buckets and the filters and things, and they're being they bring them into the school and they teach them how to use these uh, properly, how you can use them. These things last like at least ten years, and so how to clean them, how to take care of them, how to use them, and then they send them on their way. But this is the video that they've made and sent just for us, uh, and so I'm going to show that to you now. About two minutes, this video from Child Hope in Guatemala. Hey, Pastor Larry and New Life Church in Sherwood. This is Darren and Heidi Walker, and we want to say thank you for partnering with Child Hope to bring clean water to Guatemala. What an amazing gift you guys were able to give. Right now, Heidi's going to share a little bit about how this filter works and how we use this filter. So the filters are such a blessing for the people here in Guatemala. Um, there's no clean water in Guatemala, and so many people, they can't afford clean water. They drink water from the tap, and they also drink a lot of other things besides water, and so they lack having a lot of water to drink. And so these filters not only help them physically to be healthy and not get bacteria and sicknesses from the tap water, but they also help them save money so they're not having to buy clean water. It is such a huge blessing here for them to have a filter. And so we use the filters as a tool of evangelism. We don't just hand them the filter and say, God bless you, here's a gift for you. We actually give them the gospel. And we share it by putting dirt in the bucket and, and showing that the dirt is like sin in our lives. We all have sin. And the, the filter cleans, cleanses the bacteria out of the water, but Jesus cleanses our filth out of our lives. And so we've actually seen people receive Christ through water distribution, the filters, and we've also seen people get healed 
um, when you take the time to just pray with them and use it as an opportunity to share the gospel. So we really appreciate your investment in, in water filters and helping us be able to do this in Guatemala. We also want to give a shout out to Pastor Adam for motivating the youth of the church to, be, to get behind this project. And all of the gifts that were done in honor of your grandparents, uh, Lorraine and Robert. And so we want to say thank you uh, once again, Pastor Larry and the church for s stepping in and being a, a part of this great, awesome ministry of giving clean water and the gift of Jesus Christ to the people of Guatemala. Thank you so much. Have a good day. God bless you. Well, I hope you really enjoyed the video. I know I was excited when Adam told me that he had finally received it. And it's just really cool to see what your money's doing. You know, here, this is our Mission Sunday, and you see Buddy Barrel behind me, and so we always try to talk about something going on in missions. But that's something that we were actually a part of this last Christmas, Christmas 2019. And so um, we, every month, we give to missions, uh, to both missionaries and to buy missionary supplies and materials uh, for them to to direct the gospel to other countries and, and to be open and have the opportunity to do that. So when we talk about missions, that's what we're talking about. And uh, if you want to join us with that, you can go to our website and hit the give button. And there's different categories, whether it's a tithe or you want to give to missions or the other projects, uh, even our youth group is on there. So whatever you'd like to do, if you if that's something that interests you, feel free to do that. Today, I want to talk to you about something that might be a little more timely uh, because of all that's been going on here in the last week and a half. Um, at the time that uh, Adam had filmed the video last week, all of the writing and uh, uh, demonstrating had not been happening yet. And he even talked about, wondered if he should go back and refilm it and refer to that. And that's the problem. Today we're, we're uh, videoing on Wednesday. And uh, so whatever happens between now and Sunday, we won't get on the, on the video. But in watching everything that goes on, and it's not just about the demonstrating, and, and obviously the actions of the police were, were horrific. Um, again, all disclosure, my dad was a police officer. I support them um, most always, uh, but watching you know, that situation, you can't, you can't back that. Um, but then we see the, the demonstrating going on, and people wanting their opinion known, and hey, we're tired of this. And then, of course, you're going to have the side that where doubt goes too far. We see the looting and the, the destruction of property and all that, that. And when I'm talking about watching what's going on in Portland and Salem and Eugene here in Oregon. Um, and it's happening nationwide and worldwide. But I don't want to talk about that. I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, speak too much politically uh, unless they're biblical issues um, as a pastor. But at the same time, Today, I want to talk about something that I felt for a long time that we need in our country. And what is happening in our country, that if you and I disagree, then, you know, whether it be politics or religion or just different ways of life, sports teams, whatever it may be, who's the best basketball player? The GOAT, right? LeBron, or is it uh, Michael Jordan? And we can just start naming names. And uh, it's just funny, some of the ones, the names that are never thrown in that conversation. But people are very opinionated and very adamant about their thoughts. And what starts to happen, if we disagree, it can very quickly go from a conversation to now we no longer are friends. We are enemies because you don't think like I do. You don't talk like I do. You don't have the same ideas. And I would tell you that growing up, those conversations with people help form me, help shape me. Maybe stop and think. Sometimes I would think about things and I would go, you know, that's not the way I want to think. That's not what I believe. That's not what I think the Bible says. Some things like that. And other times people have changed my mind and my opinion. So I want to talk to us a little bit about the need today of a mediator. Now, a mediator needs to be someone who comes in who really has... No, no dog in the fight on either side. And that's hard to find in these big issues. Everybody has an opinion. But that will come in that both sides will agree on and say, we're going to listen to you and we're going to do what you say or take what you have to say. But more than a mediator being the third mind and make, picking a side or whatever it is, 
I would hope mediators are there to bring the two sides together. We don't have that in our politics in our country right now. If you're a Democrat or a Republican, uh, you have feelings about your party and you have feelings about the other party. And I know there's there's third parties, not really everybody out, but those are the two major ones. And I'm just using it as an example. I've seen heated discussions over sports figures and sports teams and, you know, other political uh, topics. And it's hard in our country right now to have a conversation, to have a discussion. This is why I feel that way. Well, look at this side. And we don't do it calmly. We get our tempers up. We get mad. And oftentimes we get defensive because we don't have a logical, well thought through defense of our topic. Sometimes. Sometimes we just get mad because we disagree so much with the other side. But I would encourage you, no matter what topic you're talking about, that you would logically think it through. That you would fact check things. Uh, I'm sorry, Facebook and a lot of places online are not great fact checking things. I was watching a, uh, uh, an exchange between a reporter and the White House press secretary. And they were talking about uh, the... The uh, reporter was asking the press secretary, should we not, should not the president be one of the most fact-checked people we do because of all the things he said that were wrong? And she came back and talked about what the media had said were wrong. And, you know, both sides in, in, were right in, in some degree. I think we should always fact-check. I've always said, when you listen to one of my sermons, one of my teachings, go home and fact-check me. Open your Bible and look at it and make sure that what I'm saying is right. I have sat in services, I have sat in churches, I have sat or watched things on TV about church stuff or uh, Christian stuff, and I, I disagree with it. I don't think that's what the Bible's saying. And so we need to be diligent in our, in our search for truth. Well, today, I want to continue on this, the topic of mediator. And in 1 Timothy um, chapter 2, verse 5, it says, for there is one God, and one mediator, also between God and, and the man, and men, the man, Christ Jesus. We talk a lot about Jesus being sent to save us, that we need to give our lives to him. He died on the cross to take away our sins. And that's all true. But what we don't take a look at sometimes is Jesus Christ, the mediator. And he is the one that allows us to have a communication with God. Because I know for, for me at, at times in my life, and for some of you going, how do I talk? I'm talking about praying. How do I talk to a God that created everything? How does he have time for me? Why does he care? Well, again, the Bible says he cares. He formed us in our mother's womb. He counts and knows every hair on your head. That's That's scripture. And I would tell you that he cares that much. And he wants no one to perish. He wants no one to go to hell. But he's given us choices. And he's given us choices from the very beginning. See, why we need a mediator today is you go back to Adam and Eve back in Genesis. And here we are, Adam and Eve, and they were, they were given this entire Garden of Eden. All of the, the cool stuff that was there. But they said there's one tree. One tree in the garden you cannot eat of. That's it. One. Everything else is yours. One tree. Well, if you know the story, Satan appeared to Eve in the form of a serpent and talked her into trying the apple, we call it. We don't really know it's a fruit. Tries the fruit. And everybody, you know, not everybody. I've heard people, you know, jokingly discuss about, well, we wouldn't be in the situation if it wasn't for Eve. It was her fault. Well, Adam was the follower, and he comes along, and she talks him in to eating some of it too. And now they have the knowledge of good and evil, which God did not want them to have. He wanted them to be innocent. He wanted them to trust him. He wanted this relationship between them and him to be very pure and very loving and very open. Well, fast forward here in the story of Adam and Eve, and of course, they're hiding from God in the garden and he knows that they have partaken of the tree of good and evil. Because of that, 
There was separation between us and God. And now to fill that void, we need a mediator. We need someone to bring us back together again. That mediator is Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible tells us in John 14, 6, it says, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, meaning Jesus. I say that today because we get accused of, uh, Christians are sometimes accused of you know, thinking we're better because, well, we're saved. No, we've accepted the mediator, and we're fortunate, and we want you to know about this mediator. But I want you to bring this into our world and what's going on. Jesus wants to mediate between us and God. Now, the Bible tells us he stands at the right hand of the Father. He's waiting to come back, but he's also inter, uh, interceding for us. He's talking to God on our behalf. He's our mediator. We need a mediator in our, in our culture, but we need people willing to listen. It was funny, my, my wife was having a discussion with a coworker, and he, my wife's family is very close. It is very common to have gatherings out at, at uh, the home that was out in the country, was, was her parents' house for forever. They built the house, and now it's been sold to uh, one of my wife's niece and nephews, and there's still people out there all the time. And we've been fortunate enough to have time to go out twice now on Sunday afternoons and spend time with the family. And my wife was telling a coworker about this. And he doesn't come from a background, from a setting like this. And he's just astonished. And he's asked if he and his wife could ever come out and see this. But he asked why. Why was her family so close? Why were they this way? And she said, because of Jesus because of God in our lives. And that threw him for a loop. And he goes, I'm going to have to think about that. Just, yeah, you think about that. We can talk about, you know, whatever you want to talk about, you know, but you, you chew on it. That's great. And I, and I think that's the problem we have in our countries. We see less and less God. And we got to be careful as Christians. If you're a Christian today, we have to be careful because we can get so wrapped up in our emotions in our feelings, that we put God on the sidelines or we're just reacting out of emotion. We get angry. I've been angry at a lot of things that have gone on in our country over the last few years, um, lots of years. I've never 100% agreed with a president or a political leader yet. I don't ever expect to because we're different people. We think differently. But I do believe and always have, and this is how I was brought up, that we respect the office of president. We respect the office of our president because the Bible says that God puts leaders into place. And some of us have a hard time with that when it's a leader we don't like. But we have to be careful of our anger and in our anger that we shouldn't sin. God didn't say we won't be angry. He said in your anger, don't sin. I would ask us to take some deep breaths, pray for the situation going on. For most of us, we don't have any choice. We don't have any role in mediating or being part of the answer um, to change police department's tactics or policies. We don't have the ability to go and stop people from rioting and looting for the most part. You know, you know what I'm saying? But we can pray. But we can begin with one-on-one conversations, relationships with people we have through Jesus Christ, meaning we love them. We need to love people. And so today I would just tell us that that's where we need to be. We need to be in a place where we're loving people and we're coming from a place of Jesus loving us. Mediation, sitting down and someone bringing two sides together. Jesus brought us back together with God. That was huge. We had to have that. Otherwise, the only way that we would get back to God or, or get rid of our sin for the moment was, was providing sacrifices, animal sacrifices, and, and all the things you see in the Old Testament. Jesus took the place of that. That's why he died. That's why his sin or his blood was shed for our sin. 
one last sacrifice, the one to bring God and man back together. My question for us today is what's going to bring us together as humanity? And I believe it can only be God in a, in a big way. I believe Satan is trying to tear this world apart. He's trying to drag as many out of heaven or to hell as he can. And I would just encourage us, we are the ones, it says, if my people will seek my face, humble themselves and pray. And it talks about he, he, will, he will heal the land. That's our option today. So I've been praying for you. I've been praying for our state and our country. And my prayer is that somehow God would unify us, would find mediators, not necessarily like Jesus. I mean, that's him and us, but we need mediators in the White House. We need mediators in police departments and in and, and groups of people on streets. We need mediators in, in the governor's offices. And we can go on and on and on with the positions. But we need to come together. I like the saying that talked about Martin Luther King, how it said he never rioted, he never looted, you know, he never did any of that stuff, he never hurt anyone, but yet he made a lot of change. And that's so true. And Jesus gave his life for change in our life and in our world. It's up to us to carry Jesus back to the streets in which he's given us. That's our mission field. On this Mission Sunday, first Sunday of every month, our mission field, your mission field, is wherever God's placed you and the people you come across. Do the best you can. You won't be perfect. And don't give up when you're not. You just ask for forgiveness of God and move on and try to do better. I love you guys. I thank you again for, for being with us. This has kind of been a really cool week. Uh, just so you know, we are going to be back meeting here in a few weeks. It's getting close. And so I'm excited about that part of church coming back. We'll continue to be sending videos to you. So keep checking us out. Thanks for being with us this week. Let me pray. Father, we thank you again for all that you've done for giving us a country where we could we can we can speak freely we can have that freedom we can we can talk about you uh, in churches and online i thank you for all that you've given to us may we be the greatest example for you that we can be and we need your help in that in jesus name amen see everyone next week hope you have a great week